know what you want to do with the rest of your life. Let's ask somebody who figured it out. Kim here with Emery. Hi! You tell them the name of your channel. Emery Lane. Yeah, you guys know that. You've been yeah. on here for a while. They know. Yeah. So Emery is like totally amazing YouTuber, influencer, oh overall superior human being. I kind of wanted to ask her about that because a lot of people don't realize what they want to do at your age. You're a child. She's not a child. I look <laughs> a lot younger than I really am. Compared to some people, she's quite young. <laughs> I'm 22. 22, yep. and you are on a career track, and yep. you are living the dream, mm -hmm. and that's so amazing to me. <laughs> Tell them about what you do on your YouTube channel. I do a beauty videos, so like hair and makeup, products, tutorials, all that stuff. I do DIYs, I do cooking, vlogs. All this fun stuff. Lifestyle, positivity. Yeah, positivity, mm -hmm. like being yourself. Being... Oh, yeah, the you are enough. Yep. Yeah, that's her, the that's... mantra of the channel is mm -hmm. you are enough. It's cool because not only have you found what you enjoy doing and what you're good at and what's amazing and, and your, your awesome way to give back to the world, but you have such an awesome message behind it at freaking 22. It blows me away. When did you decide to be content creator? I feel like it started on YouTube. Like you were like, I want to be like YouTuber. Yeah, and I didn't realize that. Walk us through it. Okay. When you were a child, when did you, what, what did you first want to be when you were a kid? When I was really little, yeah, I wanted to be a firefighter. <laughs> I wanted to be a firefighter. I did for the longest time. I wanted, I wanted to be a zookeeper. <laughs> Firefighters are amazing, and I'm so grateful for them. I could not be one. I couldn't either. <laughs> no, there are reasons we do what we do. Yes. So you but, wanted to be a firefighter. Yeah. How did it evolve into influencer? I want to just state this. I feel like everyone, when they're old enough to kind of decide what they want to be, they get put in a box. Oh, the box. You want to do this, this is what you're going to do. Mm, the box. Uh, you want to work in science, okay, you're going to be a scientist. Mm -hmm. And that's your only option. Yeah, you're going to go to college, you're going to get a doctorate, you're mm -hmm. going to write a thesis, you're going to get published in a scientific journal, you're going to do this research. Like, yeah, yeah it's like the and protocol. And there's nothing wrong with that. Works that's what you want to do, that is amazing. So that's kind of what my mindset was. So when I was 13, I was scrolling through Facebook mm -hmm. and I found this really cool hairstyle. And I was like, what is this? I clicked on it, I found a blog, which led me to falling in love with hair and doing hair and braids and all this stuff. Okay. And okay. so automatically people put me in the box of, oh, you're going to be a hairstylist. Hairstyles. You're oh, going to go to cosmetology okay. school. That's what you do. That's what you do. On my journey of my love of hair, I found YouTube. Mm -hmm. and right, like the, the yeah. hair and the, the yeah. beauty and everything. Okay. All that stuff. And I found makeup on YouTube and like it led me to part of who I am today. Mm. Started you down the rabbit hole. Yeah. People just kept putting me in this box of, you're gonna go to cosmetology school. Mm -hmm. And I was happy with that. What I thought would be a great life, and it is for a lot of people. In the back of my mind, like as I would get ready in the morning, as I would shower, I would come up with video ideas. Oh my gosh. And I would talk to myself as if I was talking to a camera. <laughs> I love that. All mm -hmm. this cute stuff, not realizing yeah. what I was even doing. But you were like forming content strategies yes. in your mind. Making up my own YouTube channel in my yeah. head. Yeah. Which just like and it, it but it hadn't occurred to you to no. start a YouTube channel. No, and my dad would even say you should start a YouTube channel. I'm like <laughs> you're no. crazy. <laughs> and then I went to a YouTube convention. Ah, CVX Live. Yes, CVX, CVX, CVX Live. Live yep. Yeah, which is why it's so near and dear to us. Which was why this year was hard. Yep. <laughs> but that's another. Video. That's another story. Just look at yep. it. Ugh. And I saw that they were normal people. They weren't these big celebrities. And I'm like. I could do this. Like, I'm a, I'm a that person. I'm a, like, I'm a yeah. person. I'm a person. I'm a normal person. These people have families. These people have normal yeah. lives. As normal as you can have with YouTube. Yeah. Whatever. Normal's overrated and boring. Exactly. Like, let's get that out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I went home to my mom and I was like, Mom, we need to start a YouTube channel. My head kind of went in the direction of vlog because that's who I kind of mm -hmm. saw a lot, a lot of people. Of family yeah. And things. I, I kind of discovered a lot of them. We went on that direction for two years. Yeah. Is that right? I think it is. And then someone suggested like, you know, you're not gonna be around your house for forever. One day you're gonna get married and you're gonna have to move out. Weird. Right? So you probably should start your own channel. This is what was yeah. told to you. Yeah. I was like, what? Why would I even do yeah, that? Yeah. I had um, our family channel. My mom and I ran it. We Doors in time. Doors in time. Doors in time. Fantastic channel. You guys hear me talk about them all the time. If you're not over there watching the videos, what? I loved it and I love it still. Like I still have run it. Okay, wait, what would I do? Mm -hmm. And then it was like, 
hair and makeup because that's kind of what you've just been pretending that you've been doing like years. So that's kind of that's the evolved the, the evolved, how it evolved yeah. yeah how it started that's and awesome. one thing that I really wish I would have known I really wish I would have been more self aware. I gotta make a self awareness video, yeah. you guys. Yeah. Remind me to do that in the comments. Be like, yeah. okay, make a self-awareness video. <laughs> it's just so underrated and helps you go so much farther, so much faster if you can get some self-awareness. What not only do you like doing, but what are you good at doing and what are you not good at? Strength and weakness mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Side note, cosmetology school, I honestly don't think it would work out for me because I have a really bad back. Oh, it's standing all the time. I, mean, I didn't really figure that out until I started cutting um, for free. <laughs> Family and friends hair, just yeah. to practice. Cutting one person's hair for 20 minutes wow. killed my back. Wow. See, I and have, that's something I want to touch on actually. A lot of times people kind of get that idea of what they want to be and whether that puts you in a box or not. Um, it usually does. You kind of decide what you want to do and then you start doing it and they find they don't like it. Yeah. They don't like it at all. And I think a lot of that is is down to like what you're actually doing. The scientist example. Right. How you say to yourself, I want to be a scientist because I want to find the cure for cancer. But it's like finding the cure for cancer is this big picture thing that you're not doing every day. The everyday activities in a career are the things you're doing. I don't think people think about that a lot. With cosmetology and cutting hair, you hadn't even considered the day in and day out of standing yeah. and being on your feet. Yeah. Doesn't bother a lot of people. No. But for some people that have bad backs or that have mm -hmm. an issue with it, that's a problem. And you don't even think about that until you're doing it. And a lot of times it's like, that's too late. You've gone to the however many years of cosmetology school, you've yeah. been doing it for a few months and now you're like, I hate my life. Because and I'm in pain all of the time. Yeah. You were very fortunate that you yeah. discovered that yeah. before it was too late. It's never too late. It's Let's never really too, It's no. never too late. You're never too but old. But it was a little bit of a time saver. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Saved you from that pain, yeah. the literal and figuratively. Right. <laughs> of course. I feel like people don't think about the everydayness of a career and a job, they think about the, the bigger yeah, picture. Yeah, like, oh, I'm gonna be a cosmetologist, this is gonna be amazing. Right, I'm gonna make people feel great. And it's like, and you do, and that is part of what you do every day, but it's also sweeping up hair, and yeah. it's also answering the phones, and customer service, and talking and to people messing you up on someone's to. hair. What do you even do for that? That's happened to me before. Oh, where you got the bad haircut. Yeah. I'm glad I don't have to deal with that pressure. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then, yeah, yeah. the pressure. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. The pressure of messing up. Like, yeah. I can't handle that. I can, like, feel the panic radiating <laughs> off of me right now. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna... I just think it's important that when people are considering what you want to do, your dream, and, and the, the career path that you want to choose, really think about that. Maybe even job shadow and reach out to people who are doing yeah. what you want to do and ask them about the everyday mundane tasks that they, they have to do. What they hate about it. And what they hate about it. Yeah. Because Could you handle that? Some things you can. I can handle sitting down in front of a computer screen all day long. Doesn't bother me. Husband needs to move around a bunch. Mm -hmm. He's a software engineer, so you can imagine that there's not a lot of physical activity with that. He has to really be conscious about that when he gets home from work. He does not like to sit and watch Netflix. Can we please just like Netflix. zone out and watch like, what are we watching now? The Americans. Like, is what we're watching now? Can we please just like sit and do that for like five hours? Right. And he's like, no, I gotta go build a go-kart out of a swing set. <laughs> That's really what he did. We have a go-kart. <laughs> Here's a picture of him and Ruthie. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's like, amazing. But he needs that. Like he needs to work with his hands and he needs to move about right. and be physical. When yeah. when he was going into computers and tech, that something he didn't think about right. was the sitting. It's important to reach out to people that are doing that and to look into job shadow and to, to really look into it. Do a Google search. Start there. That's yeah. where I start. And step out of the box. Step out of the box. Oh my goodness. That little box mm -hmm. that's so cute and adorable and amazing. The box is, is great, but it's not for me. It's, it's not, not for you. No. Honestly, it's really not for anybody because everybody's life is so different and every personality is different and everything. There's no box that's going to just fit more than one person. Everybody needs right. their own box. Right. Those are oddly shaped. Yeah. They're not really box shaped. I feel like mine is probably some sort of like swirl. Mine's a curl. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And it's like a little slide. It's like, <laughs> like a shoots and ladder. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people, they can't get out of the box. Like they get so defined by it. Yeah, like, where are you going to college? What are you going to do? <laughs> Just step out of the box. Like, Just step out of the box. Figure out how to do it without the box because you'll be more successful right. at it. I love hair. Mm-hmm. And the box put me in the only cat. There was just one option. Yeah. Here's your option. Here's the box. This is the only box. For right. You. you said no to the box, and yeah. now you're happier, and oh, you're I... better suited for it. Yeah. And so you're more successful, and the world is better off because of it. The world needs things, and we can 
put into the world the things that it needs mm -hmm. if we have a little bit of self-awareness and do some research and really figure out and get to know yourself so that you can do that so that not only are you better off and more successful but the world is better off because of that. Yeah. Do you have any um, tips or advice for people that are kind of a little lost and they're thinking of stepping out of the box, where would you start? Talk to your best friend or mm -hmm. your mom or something. That's really scary. Stepping out of the box, that can be very scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that can be for some parents. For sure. Parents are amazing. I love them to death. But sometimes they can... like. Sometimes if, they put you in a box. Yeah, they're not doing it on purpose. It's true. It's true. They want what's best for you. If you are approaching your parents with a career change or you've decided what you want to do with your life and you think it's not going to be in line with what they right. thought, do remember that if your parents disagree with you, even if it gets ugly or whatever, what just happens? remember that your parents are doing that because they, they want what's best you. for yeah. you and they're just worried that that's not... What's, what's best. What's best. Yeah. And or best. your spouse or significant whomever, other, whoever. Yeah, best friend, yeah. sister, whatever. Sometimes you have to just stand your ground with that. Yeah. The first step is really saying it out loud to yourself. I was just going to say yeah. I, I would say it to my dog. To okay. your pillow pet. Someone that's going to listen without judgment, yeah. probably because they can't say audible words. It's good to say it out loud because it's a manifestation mindset yeah. thing. Like it kind of puts it into the universe and that yeah. this is happening. I was even saying the stuff out loud mm -hmm. I and I wasn't that. even yeah. recognizing it. So making YouTube videos I've, without filming them. <laughs> if you don't really, you're just clueless mm -hmm. on what you want to do, really, really looking into your hobbies. And if you're like, my hobby is reading and I don't want to be an author. Book reviewer, beta book, reader, yeah, editor, something. booktuber. There's a reason that I do what I do with life coaching. And if you're like, I don't want to have to, I just want to do books for fun. I don't want that to be my career. That's, yeah. That's, that's, because I feel That's like an important thing to know. There was something I was doing with where as soon as it became a job, it was like <gasps> writing fiction for somebody else. Like they wanted to do a short story anthology, mm -hmm. whatever. And I was like, yeah, I can write something. I love writing. I have two books published. It's amazing. Right. And like, I sat down and I was like, I have to do this. Somebody else is counting on me. Right. This is somebody else's obligation. Ew. I right. love her and I did it anyway and it's great. But you didn't want to do that for the rest of no, your life. No, right. It right. taught me a lot about myself and it was like, and that's one of the reasons I don't like blogging. Right. It's because it's like, I have to do this. Yeah, like you. Just There's pressure. Grosses me out. Trying hobbies with the mindset of could of this be a, a career? Job. Yeah. And but there's no pressure because it's a hobby. Right, right. But but could you do it if you were under pressure? Right. If you like airplane model making or whatever, mm -hmm. that could be a career for you somehow. Well, basically anything's a career if you put it on YouTube. Right. Someone out there, somewhere, mm -hmm. is looking for something that doesn't exist yet. That's true. The box needs to just the be box, thrown across the, box, the room. Yeah. Step out of the box and then light the box on fire. Yep. And just watch it burn. <laughs> for reals? Yeah. Stay out of the box. Say it out loud what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then research it and start looking into yeah. it. There's so many things I'm sure you don't even know exist. It's true. And if it doesn't exist, it's time for you to like yeah. bring it to existence. Yeah. Be a pioneer. Be an innovator. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much. This was really helpful. I think that... A lot of people can learn something. People are either lost in the box or they they want to step out of the box they and they're just how. lost with it. They're just yeah. not sure what to do. And, and it's really cool to, to see it manifested and that you've done it and it's so cool and to hear some kind of tips with it on how other people can do it too because I know a lot of people want to do that. Would you rather start a YouTube channel about water polo or about building wax figures for museums? Answer here! If you found this video helpful, make sure to share it with everybody you know on the internet. Clickety-click the share button down there and send this video off to your preferred social media. And be sure to check out my website if you need a starter life coach who isn't at all normal. Thanks for watching! <laughs>